The ocean is really, really big. In truth, the average person knows very little about the ocean. In this 48-part documentary series, we will begin to investigate what occurs in the deepest depths of the Earth's fragile ocean ecosystems. Countless stories play out in its icy depths. Beyond me you will see a puffin and a fish, no doubt pushing forward the wheel of life in a little increment, even now. What a loser. Hey buddy, you want to learn about the ocean? Try living in it. No. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I'm I'm a vegetarian. Uh You ate a fish like literally 1 minute ago. A pescatarian. So is literally every puffin. Ah. Uh, like really, like literally every single one. I'm I'm trying to br really broaden I, the, there's not like there's not like a singular puffin who is it? I'm trying. I'm trying to broaden my horizons. You know, you you all aren't as common as you used to be. It's the cold. Nobody nobody wants to live up here. It's too cold now. You you notice, right? It's it's a lot colder now. Like the water, like the water is significantly colder now. Oh, so 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 that's what this was. I thought I was. Uh, I thought I was sitting on yeah, it. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, the uh, the water is a lot colder. It's the uh, it's the deep ocean conveyor. It stopped moving, or anyway, it's moving less quickly than it probably ought ought to be. No, no, not like, not like that. Well, actually, actually, it kind of is like that. Well, not, no, not. Not that the um, uh, the first one, the conveyor belt with the boxes, that's that's actually pretty okay. So, uh, possible it changes provided the Atlantic keys meridian will overturning certain. I have a question. Okay. If if global warming is happening, then why is the ocean getting colder? Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I'm pretty unbiased when I say that the wind is pretty much the most important part of ocean circulation. Sure, without wind, the ocean might move a little bit, but up here's where the real action happens. Let's go down to the tropics and see where the big currents start. Oh. Wow, wow, it is hot here, holy moly. I am an arctic animal, oh gosh. Oh, well, you know why it's so hot here is because we are so close to the sun. No, no, we are not closer to the sun. That is not why it's hotter here. Yeah, you know, it, it, it seems like we Arctic animals misread an invitation to a Faroese dinner party. But that's, it's not because we're close to the sun. It's because of how the sun hits the earth. Here in the tropics, the sun's light is focused on only a little bit of space. All the heat in the sun's light hits a really small area. Further north, though, the same amount of light hits way more land. That means that the same amount of light and heat gets spread out way more. Think of it like this. You go outside on a hot sunny day. It's warm for you, but if you focus the light with a magnifying glass, it gets way hotter. It's like that. Oh, that makes sense. Of course it does. You know, just because you're right doesn't mean you have to be arrogant about it. Anyway, as I was saying, the sun heats up the air around the equator. Lots of sunlight is focused, thank you, is focused on the equator. Now think of a hot air balloon, okay? A little fire can make a big bag of air heat up, right? The hot air balloon pilot starts a fire. That fire heats up the air inside the balloon, and look, look, it's expanding. The air inside the balloon gets bigger and bigger. That's because the hot air expands, and when it expands, it rises. 
Air is made out of little particles called atoms. When air gets hot, the little atoms start moving around, bouncing off each other. Think of a paper bag full of marbles. If you just leave the bag on the table, they just sit there. But if you shake the bag really hard, it probably rips because the marbles bounce around and crash into the sides and push outward. They can't tear the bag. They just make it bigger as long as you're shaking it. Now let's go back to our balloon. The balloon has the same amount of air in it, whether it's warm or cold. The only difference is how energetic those air molecules are. So, if you heat up the balloon, there's the same amount of air in it as there was before, the same mass of air. Because that same mass of air is filling more space, that means that the air is less dense, which allows it to be buoyant and float upwards, like balloons do. This all happens in the ocean too, you know. It's not always, you know, with temperature. It's a much smaller temperature difference, but it does happen a lot with salt. Love salt. To be honest, I'm having trouble believing that that actually works. Well, yeah, it doesn't work entirely by itself. It really needs that component from the wind to drive the surface movement. That's what really moves the cold water to a couple of select places, like the North Atlantic, where it could sink down into the deep ocean and drive that, that conveyor we talked about earlier. So, air rises at the equator, and that pulls new air in, causing wind flows to come towards the equator. These winds, in turn, drive surface currents in the ocean. Those currents, in combination with the density differences of salty or colder water, cause the deep ocean circulation, which moves cold water from the surface to the deep ocean, and from the deep ocean back to the surface. But of course, all good things have to come to an end. As global warming is occurring, it's causing ice sheets to melt. There's a whole lot of fresh water building up in the North Atlantic. Fresh water is a lot less dense, which makes sense because salt water's got a bunch of extra stuff in it. It's the same volume of water at the end. Cold, fresh water is never going to sink in salt water. It has to mix in. But like we talked about, getting mixing to happen in the ocean is pretty tough. So... Cold water continues to flow into the North Atlantic, which eventually causes a huge mass of cold water to build up. The fresh water can't leave, and the new water just builds up behind it. This ends up cooling off the entire continent of Europe and North America. And this isn't like a crazy hypothetical or something either. This has all happened before. Look to the 1300s through the 1700s, and you see the Little Ice Age in Europe, which caused massive famines and years and years without summers, snow in the summer, all because of this Atlantic circulation slowing down just a little bit. And that was a naturally occurring change, so... So what are we supposed to do then? It's hopeless. I don't know. I have a suggestion. Come on now, we need music. Something... Icelandic. That's oddly specific. Is anyone else bothered by the fact that wasn't his real accent? I mean, really, the accents of this thing have been really remarkably inconsistent, so, you know, take what you can get. Shh, shh, I'm ready to start. I think it's going to be good. The Earth is a beautiful place. The only place most of us would have the privilege to know. We have heard it, that is undeniable. But we love it too. We each of us have the ability to take action. There is no little way to combat climate change. Drive a little less, plant a tree, eat a little less meat. Every step is an important one that you have the power to make. Every step helps us protect the world we were born on, that we live on, and that we will die on. Be humbly aware of your impacts and try to be better. If we all, in our own little ways, we can drive change that can protect our planet for generations to come. 
I think it's worth it. What do you think?